the left hand side to start things off will be our red Terran player. This is Clem from Team Liquid. In the bottom left hand side, our blue Protoss from Gen G. Of course, you know, the big name team picking up a player in StarCraft 2. We have Trap. Gen G big in uh, League of Legends, if I'm not mistaken. Big Korean team. Now having their foot in StarCraft 2. With a player that may not be at the Esports World Cup next year, but if this was to be a thing next year as well, Trap is a very good player to already have in your pocket before he gets picked up by another team that's willing to wait out the clock and roll the dice on the potential of, you know, next year's Esports World Cup being of a similar format with the team things and stuff going on as well, so... Yeah. Alright, well, we've got the official WTL obs in here, so I can follow his camera for a little bit instead of, uh... Paying on you guys with my painful observing. So we'll jump on his cam and have a look to see where everything is going here for game number one. This is going to be a trap scout into the upper left-hand side here on Amphion, just moving in nice and early. Probe starts to nibble up a little bit, SCV taking some damage. SCV on the other side from Clem trying to return some fire. Reaper Orbital both on the way up, Cybercore still coming through. Just for the moment. We do have that probe escaping out of there. So Orbital Command still coming up. The Reaper still coming by. Cybercore and the Nexus just coming by as well. And we have ourselves this uh, probe still moving out over the edges. Again, Cybercore is about to complete. The Assimilator's coming up right here. Just getting this all on the way. Hydrogen Reactor continue to build around. Having our uh, Reaper coming in. The Adept is going to be there to play the pushback, though, as well. It's just going to chase that out of here. Pushing everything out for the moment. Looking good. As you see, the Adept coming through also ready to chase. Hey, what's up, Jazzvan? Thanks so much for the 16 month resub. Welcome back. Adept comes over, gets the SCV, the probe's still moving about. Reaper heads to the upper left hand side as well. As the cyclone will come down, picks up on a probe, takes that out immediately. Well, couple CCs are still building on by. Obviously, Triple Command Center from Clan wants to play an eco focused game. I don't want to put too much pressure on in these early stages. It's kind of happy to let it go a bit later. Interesting, though, because, as I was saying, my current opinion on Trap from what I've seen of him is that he's better later in the game than he is earlier in the game. So I'd say if this was kind of, you know, of Trap's choosing, I feel like he would pick something along those lines right now. I don't think he's too upset about it. Warp Gate is about to finish. The Blink is halfway done. Robo Facility still coming through here from Trap. And as we get a Gateway continue to build. Also, Adepts do grab a Reap out the front. So that's one nice pickoff. And that's Clem. Just has his extra barracks on the way, obviously. Factory initially with a tech lab. Get a tank up and start looking to stabilize in these early stages. Couple of racks still coming online. The CC finishing orbital command. About halfway done as well. Additional marines in production in the SCV. Also producing tech lab coming in from Clem. A few adepts going to go shading up in towards the high ground there. Still blink. Producing through, going to be finished up in a couple of moments as our extra probes get into production as well. So just bringing all of that by. The stim pack also coming in on the side of Clem. Just getting stim, marines, a little bit of everything you brought, brought through for the moment. And stim and combat shields come by. Going to give us a fun little uh, way to move forward from as the extra marines are coming out also. And our observer still producing on the side of trap. Stalkers pull back, and again the Nexus and Obs. This trap just goes towards three base. It's 
Steven Combat Shield. Coming on in. And of course, Clem has no real intention of being any sort of aggressive until he gets to that uh, set of upgrades. You know, the longer he lets his 3cc advantage kind of kick in for, typically the better off he's going to be. The Cyclone here will pick off the Adept as it's going to go hunting for that probe as well, I believe. And uh, just looking to try and get a grab on that. Single Marine just shows up, looks to see the saturation on this third base, get a rough idea. Hey, is this a real third base? Are you actually trying to mine from this? Or is this maybe a bit of a fake out? Definitely a bit of a question mark. Gates, probes, the immortal. We'll continue to come by our stalkers. I'm just going to intercept a medevac here. Takes that out. The other medevac taking some damage as well. Bio coming over, hunting those stalkers, and the stalkers get pushed away. I'm just going to get another catch here, though. Good play from Clem. Good movement. We'll get force filled, so at least Trap gets some units in return for your stalker losses. Plus one attack about halfway done. The Templar Archives is halfway done from Trap as well. Charge still building. Additional barracks on the way up with more depots being brought through as well. And there's Traps Tech. Storm on the way up. That's one of the things he's definitely seen success with as of late. So seeing that Storm upgrade coming in now definitely sets us off in a good direction. And the plus one attack upgrade coming up from Clem. A couple of barracks are still building through. Depots and a widow mine coming up as well. Viking also out very shortly here. As our bio force of Clem will work its way down to the south. So heading down to the bottom. Our bio army will collect together. Looking for a little bit of a move. Another High Templar warping in, still got our Storm coming up, the extra gateways are coming out. And the Clem. We have the Engineering Bay and the Armory coming up as well. Two more Vikings and Marauders still coming up. The Widow Mines are building from Clem also. Additional Zealots will warp in and we will drop a Nexus down on the fourth base. Just going to put that straight through. And Clem not able to get in position to deal with that. May want to open up those rocks if he wants to have that as an aggressive option. His own fourth base delayed by the Zealots, which he's only able to catch one of, or two of. So that's not going to be uh, too much of a denial from him too quickly. Army continues back down to the bottom. Again, Forge, Robo Facility, Robo Bay all continue to build. Our Prism is coming up halfway done with the plus one. Halfway done also. Our Bio gets a catch on an Observer over on the left-hand side. So that's a nice, lovely little pick. One more Stalk is warped in once more here from... Trapped as you can see, you bring those numbers up. Robo facility, Robo Bay, all coming about. Our bio unit still unloading out towards the center. So we head ourselves around the right. Still got a prism loaded and making a bit of a move as well. A couple of zealots moving forward. Gonna take some shots. Up go those medivacs. Cyclone in position. Prism gonna get locked onto. Mine goes off, Prism will fall, so that's actually a big pick. It's going to be seen a Ghost on to get some snipes up. Some Marines going to fire in toward those elves as well, trying to play the cleanup game. Big drop from Clem actually heading down the left while a lot of his other army heads around the right. So trying to split up the aggression here, trying to make this happen in a couple of different places. It's a first storm. Obviously, you drop into the, uh, actually, this position here, so not kind of into the main or anything, but kind of on that low ground. Storm comes in, Clem just going to lift and leave. He's got to be careful not to get uh, feedback as well on the medevac once they're low. 
That was a great storm over here, plus a feedback got a go got kill on a ghost. Just a lot of splash damage going down there in general, adding up and definitely making good progress. Oh, the mine shot lines up, plus two attack and extended thermal land still on the way. Our prism and our plus two armor continuing through as well. As our bio continues to unload into the bottom right hand side, stalkers and immortals looking to get set. A few force fields coming down, the units gonna get picked away at. We're actually going to boost into this main base where we are going to see the unload. Battery is going to take some damage. Storm is already split away from Bio. Continue to chase down. So Immortal getting caught by the units trying to give chase as well. We just have ourselves one Immortal dropping. Bio still fighting. Pylon going to go down. Five gateways and the forge all depowered. Huge moment right there as we have the Bio still pressing through. A Nexus gets killed off, I believe, not even cancelled. Clem does just have a supply advantage right now as Trap is trying to hold on in many different places, but it feels like Clem has just taken one too many advantages. Snipes off that High Templar out of energy anyways, but of course, still nice to make sure it's not there for the future now. Clem just pulls back up the right-hand side. Escaping away for the moment. Once again, an army of trap is going to set itself right out into the center very early on. Moving forwards very swiftly as the rest of the force from trap gets set up a little bit as well. Trying to figure out what the plan may be. You can see our stalk is still fine. A couple of those Vikings going down. Damage being done. As actually Trap gets a good chase away, but I'm still not convinced by the overall numbers for him in this game. I feel as though he is still missing a little bit to truly see some successes. I mean, he's just not quite got the army supply. If he had like plus 30 army supply or so, then I, I could believe. But right now he's just absorbing blows. And it feels like he's getting further and further behind because Clem is expanding effectively. Trap is getting no harassment on the other side of the map at the same time, so... He's not making any progress there. Fire moves forward again. Just going to go after a pylon and a few probes. Will be kind of caught in the crossfire of this bioforce looking for the base. Six probes going down already. Looks though like we're going to keep on fighting. We put up the EMPs quickly. Marauder heavy able to fight Stalker and Colossus. These two Vikings here have a chance to finish off a Colossus. They will turn around and do just that. So... Now there's no splash damage. Without splash damage, you've got to be afraid, but the prism starts to move forward. Clem splits. He actually does eat a couple of storms in the end, but I don't think it's enough to stop him from just attacking this position. Cannon will go down. Reinforcements from the right side. That means Clem's attack on the right side is going to reset. Clem just uses this army as now a bait. Moving elsewhere as the army on the right is back in, and that's where a lot of probes are going down. And Clem with the multi-prong. Absolutely overall, giving himself an advantage as Trap is right up through the middle of the map, by the way. Big army, looking good. Making a move to the top. Good mine gets picked off there. Stalk will go down. We blink and get a medevac again. Plan 30 army supply ahead. Just needs to, to show it, really. Another empty medevac. They'll get jumped on here as Clem makes some sloppy mistakes. Doesn't need to bring them back in the way which he's doing. And is making this a little bit tougher for himself. Get rid of the pylon now. Probes are dropping down as well. The rest of the army from Clem through the center and over to that left-hand side. Stalkers blink in. The medevacs will be destroyed. Those few zelds are still getting catches and cleanups. One more storm and those Vikings have to back away. Now we've lost a base in the process. We're losing probes in the process. Clem is chipping the damage onto Trap. The more damage it chips onto him, the less likely Trap is going to be able to recover from any of these positions and situations. So that is the issue that is beginning to arise. I own to this base here, just going to drop off in the main and just work its way through a bunch of gateways, so looking for damage there as well. 
gateways being depowered. We've seen them gateways in that forge depowered a couple times over at this point. Seems to be a continuation of uh, what was happening previously. As you are going to stand and fight here, the storm coming out. The Colossi will fight to clean up. Clem has a massive army on the right-hand side, however, so able to start pushing through on that right side, able to start making a bit of a break. Oh, crap, somehow just about hangs on again, refusing to die. But he is down a base. Clem mining off of a fifth in the upper right corner. That's a big deal. That's money you can continue to work with. As another storm comes out, we are going to see Trap actually taking advantage of the moment. We'll get rid of a couple of these ghost cells. We'll get in front of try and tank. Of course, his army is not huge, but just making do with what he's got, trying to find a way to stay alive. Well, the rest of this army from Trap rallies up through the center. The bio force is already in position in the bottom right. Once again, Trap is going to be out of location. As the Zards, the Immortals, the Stalkers all continue to chase through, and we have ourselves a Trap army. Is gonna again fight one more time, but you're under heavy duress at home. It's unlikely that this army is really gonna get too much done here because eventually Clem is just gonna play cleanup. He's already working his way through the Colossus, so the splash damage is being limited. The Immortals are not gonna be too much of a buffer when they've got nothing to buffer for. The Vikings will land and again across the map. Clem is putting in serious work to close this game out and take us to a game one victory in favor of Clem. So Clem getting right, but apparently so. Bottom right hand corner, that blue Terran player from Team Liquid takes the 1-0 lead with comfortable play on Amphi, and I wouldn't say he was ever really in too much danger. Comfortable series so far, it is Clem. Can he keep that up? Going into game two here, as in the top left, our red Protoss player from Gen G, it is Trap. Game number two, get this underway. Is DJBSTN Sue? Yes, that is Sue's ID on the challenge page. Uh, let me actually just have a quick uh, mention of any results for you guys as we come out of that last game. Obviously, we're at the point where results continue to trickle through. So, Hero is still waiting for Spirit or U Thermal. Um, Firefly is still waiting for Skillless or Sue. Sue does take down Trigger 2 to 1. Uh, Lambo took out, uh, took out Gumiho 2 to 0. Oh, so, Lambo plays Showtime today in the round of 16. Kua takes on Mana, who took out Milky Cow. Uh, so, that's a round of 16 matchup alongside Clem Trap, which we're watching. Max Pax 2 1 over Creator will take on Classic now in the round of 16 for more PvP. And there's potential for more PvP in that section of the bracket as Young Yakov did beat uh, his first opponent, but now plays Yeshi, and the winner of that plays Nightmare. That's the same section of the round of eight as Max Pax in Classic. So they are all potential opponents down the line. That's where our tournament is looking today. That's where things are at so far. If you want to see that bracket, it's pinned at the top of the chat on YouTube, or you can exclamation mark B in the chat to bring up the bot here on Twitch. Engineering Bay block to start us off for this game too. So Clem already looking to take control of this uh, second game from the start. Put a slow down on his opponent's expand. Maybe force his hand a little bit. There's going to be a pro pull to deal with it. The SCV comes back in to try and get some extra time built onto that Engineering Bay. Kill off that pro mine time for as long as possible. Probes nibbling, engineering bay taking some damage. Factory is still coming through. Uh, assimilator and adept continues to come by. Couple cyclones coming in for now. We get this all underway. It's a Stargate from Trap to mix up his uh, openers from that Twilight last time around. Couple cyclones coming through from Clem. The Adept is going to shade up the ramp. Cyclone still building out. And the commands in the building from Clem is going to be about halfway done. Refinery coming up also. Cyclone's coming about here. <coughs> it's just, yeah, Nexus coming through. Phoenix coming up. Warp Gate on the way. Now two Cyclones together pushing towards the upper left-hand side. 
The Japs are going to come shading out Cyclones with the lock-ons. I'm just going to find her up. Those Adepts taking some damage. Cyclones lock-on again. Battery being drained of energy. Once the battery energy is gone, you kind of need an overcharge here, but that is going to be one dead adept before the overcharge comes through, so it would have just been better to put that in a little sooner. The Hellions try and dive by. The Cyclones still going to be the damage dealers on the front lines. I wasn't going to really deal damage to the Cyclones right now, but obviously by trying to dive by with the Hellions, you force one of the Phoenix to use that energy early. Now the Phoenix will use energy onto this uh, Cyclone. We're going to put a Widow Miner 2 a bit further back. We've got more Cyclones building from Clem as well. And this push continues for the moment. A series transfer out from the main base. Orbital coming online. Again, Cyclones, Viking, Marine all coming through. The Phoenix and the Gateway coming up. I kept thinking about shading around a little bit here. As again, our two Cyclones are still coming through. About halfway done at the moment. Stalker's still putting on pressure. Actually going to find a Cyclone. The Widowmine goes off on the Adept that was basically dead already. All the Cyclones will end up going down here. We're going to clean up, what, the Stalkers, but only the Stalkers, it seems like. Even that last Stalker stays alive, and that Viking is obviously just... Oh, we actually got the Stalker, at least, but that Viking is likely dead to the Phoenix, given enough time for a lift to be available. I'm still going to rally and reinforce toward the center. And as we get another pick, so there goes the Viking. So I'm still looking to try and force something of a fight, knowing the Phoenix are low energy. And knowing that he's uh, cleaned out the ground units, he's actually going to get rid of one Phoenix right now. We commit in his trap. Two Phoenix for a, a, psych a, little, for a Viking is going to be the first cost of this trade. And that ain't pretty. That's a lot of lifting energy. That's a lot of damage output lost to you just there. That was a mistake made from trap. That was not the uh, trade you were looking for. And this makes the whole situation that little bit better now from Clem than what it was looking to be before. Stalker's coming back through. Cyclone's taking damage. The Phoenix still pushed away. Bit of mines burrow up once again. Stimpak, Cyclone, Viking, Marine. All being brought up currently. Battery putting a little bit of healing in. A couple of Widow Mines sitting out the front. Twilight and the Gate coming online. Nexus also finishing fairly soon. Probe gets blown up by a mine. And that pylon coming through as well. Well, game settles down. All of this early kind of trades. Resource lot is in favor of trap. And his economy has been fine as well. Now getting that third base rolling with the probes producing three at a time. Get that income set up to rumble. Is Phoenix into Twilight a thing? Yeah, absolutely. Phoenix Charge is super powerful. Phoenix Charge shuts down a lot of early attacks because the Phoenix can lift the tech units and the charge offs can just overwhelm if you're reliant on those tech units to be successful. Phoenix Charge is the sort of composition you don't want to go pushing into too early, and then you just transition to a ground army from there. Phoenix Colossus is a little bit overall maybe safer and more defensive, whereas Phoenix Zealot is like the aggressive option from this. I might even be able to get aggressive with Phoenix Zealot as well if he feels as though he's done enough early. So with these early trades, he might be feeling that he's able to kind of get enough Zealots out that he can have an influential kind of swing on some early fights, so that might be something that goes down. You see, uh, Liv's coming through on a bunch of Marines, but they get dropped back down again. There's quite a lot of Viking Cyclone. This is, these are units which are going to be okay against the Phoenix, but terrible against the Charge Lot, so be watching for those. Nexus drops into the 12 o'clock position. We get that going. Cyclone's going to get locked on to straight away here, and they're lifted up, so already we see Trap actually able to take something of a decent fight. He's really just missing Zealot numbers, though. He's warping piling off to the left side. He's not super nearby. That's going to be another Phoenix already low. The lower that all these Phoenix get, the less impactful they're going to be, and at some point you're just fighting with Zealots. 
And against Bio, it seems as though this is not going to be enough for Trap. These first few fights were not good enough at all. He's going to rally some more units forwards. The Vikings may want to tank for it now, although Clem is going to prioritize saving those in the Medivax, but either way, he's going to get a few zealots out of it. So Clem is still trading fantastically in the scenario. Two Archons morphing in. Uh, Phoenix Zelda still coming about. Plus one armor finishing shortly. We have the Ghost Academy coming up from Clem. And if loads up, the few Zelda's continue to charge through Widow Mines. Gonna be going off. One Phoenix going down already. Other Widow Mines going off as well. Zelda's are still getting collapsed on. As all those Zelds go down, we can turn our attention to the Archons now. Both Archons there going. The Bioforce still fighting against those Stalkers. Dragon's going to lift back into the sky. We see the rest of the Bio still coming through. Zelds It's going to continue up as well. It's going to get into this mineral line. And plus one, Shire Phoenix and Archon production still just continuing up. Our Vikings in the skies, Liberators are sieging. It's going to be Phoenix Zell to move around in the center a little. Man center building on the fourth base. Facility coming through. Phoenix in the plus one attack upgrade coming about. Our forge continues in. We do have our Viking bio army still pushing the Phoenix back a little as well. Green gets a bit of a probe. The Zealots still joining up together and just seeing our. T2 upgrade still coming about here from Clems. So still bringing those out. The extra rack still coming in. Missile turret coming up also. T2 blink coming about. That robo base still coming online. Game gets to settle down in a big way, but I think that benefits Clem. Settling down, gets more of his upgrades up. Get the army size a pumping as well. It's kind of a big factor. As you dive in here, battery falls. Immediately going to see the rest of this army from Clem coming up from the south side. It's going to come through Zelda Archon. It's pretty good, though, against these smaller units, a uh, number of units, and that's a fight I think Clem would wish he had back. He's going to try and turn this into a few probe kills, which is going to be successful. He gets seven in the end. So, to be fair, that's really not a bad deal. Could have been so much worse. So, so, so much worse. Well, Bio just finishes off this gateway. Storm is now going to be on the way up, so we bring that in on the Templar Archives. The Zealot, and get rid of the Widow Mine. Zealot, Archon, Phoenix moving about again. Plus two, Storm, Blink, all continuing in. Gonna see those couple libs still firing back. The Phoenix taking more additional shots of damage. Now that storm coming through, extended thermal lens, two upgrades all coming about. Our Vikings will get there to shut uh, down that warp prism, so the warp prism will fall. Pushes up the left hand side trap. We're gonna be in a little bit of a bullied position here. The Vikings can get a good uh, advantage over the Colossus. Love the Zelda counter attack, gonna catch reinforcements, may be able to lead into a base, but yeah, Trap can't bring his main army in over here. So that part of this is gonna go a little bit worse. He's gonna get rid of this next in the end. Still, Trap just counter attack, and that's gonna be his focus at the moment. Heading down that right hand side and across to see what he can do. 
against his opponent. Uh, I guess he Clem though just says, well, I'd actually like to uh, just continue to fly forwards. Gonna do exactly that as the Zelda's on the other side now getting cleaned up. Fire still pushing in. These Stalkers taking a lot of damage. Clem is eating some storms, but the overall power of this army is quite clearly at the moment in Clem's favor. And going very strongly as sentries and the Stalkers taking hits. Disruptor goes down. As three armor continues up. The couple more Colossus on the way from Trap, but Clem's army supply lead here. And just lead in general here is definitely becoming pretty serious. Clem just continues to attack forwards. It's not enough from Trap anymore from Clem. A longer series, but a very comfortable one. I still don't really feel like Clem was in too much trouble at any point. The start of this game was a little bit funky, but when Trap tried to capitalize on what had happened, Nothing really came of it. Nothing really became a bigger issue. And Clem does move 2-0 through into the...